What's up, Nerdyverse? I'm Daddy Louie, and in this video, we are taking a look at a game called Surviving the Game. So stick around. Before we get started, if you're new to our channel and you want to see more content like this, start now by hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. As you can see, our move is complete and I am in the new studio space. Um, I still haven't unpacked everything, so the stuff that you see behind me will evolve over time. But I just want to take a second and thank everybody uh, for their patience as I took a week off last week from recording videos. Uh, but there is content up on the page uh, that was created by the rest of the Circle of Nerds as a tribute to this show. Uh, also, this video marks the one-year anniversary of me posting videos every single week here on the Circle of Nerds. So I just want to really thank everybody who watches uh, for your continued support and patronage uh, to what we do here at the Circle of Nerds. So in this video, we are taking a look at surviving the game. Now, this vi uh, this game takes uh, place in a made-up universe. It's kind of like a dystopian world where uh, this company, Geotech, they make all the world's weapons, uh, technology, um, bioweapons, you know, all this cool engineering stuff. And all these different countries and organizations are basically fighting over who's going to be in, uh, you know, good favor over Geotech's good stuff. And they finally said, you know what, if you want our if you want our goods, you're going to have to uh, survive the game. And uh, so they created this uh, world in which you can send yourself into, um, and it has different levels. At its core, it is a deck-building game. Um, it is, it, it's a push-your-luck deck-building game. It does have a solo mode, which is great. Uh, the more players you play with, the more fun it is, in my opinion. Uh, but there is a solo mode to see how uh, how you can score just on your own. And we'll take a look at all of that uh, in just a second. Um, this game is going to be available uh, via Kickstarter soon-ish. Um, the developers don't want to uh, jump the gun on a Kickstarter. So they've actually put up a Kickstarter preview page and they're looking to start the Kickstarter once they've reached 500 followers. I'll leave a link in all of that in the description below so that you can go check it out. Make sure that you follow that so that uh, the developers can uh, go ahead and launch this on Kickstarter. But is it good? Well, if you'll join me on the table, we will check it out. Uh, before we take a look at the components real quick, uh, I do want to apologize. I know that there is a slight echo in the recording. That's because the new space that we're in, um, you know, I don't have anything up on the walls yet and stuff. So uh, that'll go away eventually. So just bear with me. But anyway, uh, we do have uh, our materials here that came inside the box. Um, there will be standees. Uh, the meeples are temporary. This is just a... Um, this is a preview copy. This is a prototype. So everything that you see here is subject to change. Uh, the dice here represents the rounds of the uh, the opening section of the game. The game kind of happens in uh, two phases. Um, and then these uh, little teardrop tokens here represent uh, your health that goes on your character cards. Uh, there are three types of characters, if you will. Uh, there are soldiers, cyborgs, and biogens, uh, or biogenes, and uh, the cards are double-sided, which is cool. Uh, you have a male art, you have male art on one side and female art on the other side. Uh, these are all the same as far as stats and stuff goes. You're basically just going to decide if you want to play as a soldier, a cyborg, or a biogen, um, and that happens in the early uh, parts of the game. Uh, and then everything else is pretty much just uh, cards. You have barracks cards. These are cards that um, you can buy in the opening phase of the game, and then they go away. Um, injury cards are, um, you know, when you take damage or uh, suffer an injury from one of the obstacles that you're going to go against inside the game, um, you will take one of these cards. You lose uh, victory points for each one of these in your end deck. And of course, it fills up your deck with cards that you don't necessarily want. 
Uh, these are all the items that you can purchase. I'll show you kind of what they mean once we get into the setup. And then uh, these are the levels of the game. There are five levels of the game. Um, the object is not just to escape the game. Uh, escaping the game will trigger end game for everyone else. Um, but it is also to uh, score the most victory points while you are inside the game. So you don't want to just escape, you want to survive while racking up victory points while inside. Uh, but you can die, and if you die, you're out of the game. So um, that's kind of that push your luck mechanic that I was talking about. But uh, I want to set up um, the buying space, and then we'll go through uh, the phases of the game. All right, I'm really struggling here to get all the cards on the camera, but um, there's... When you're setting up your buying area, um, like I said, this is a deck builder. So you're gonna be purchasing cards to add to your deck to make your deck stronger. Um, everybody starts with a starting deck of seven credits and three unarmed combat. Um, the credits are exactly what they sound like. They generate um, your ability to purchase items. Uh, the cost of the item is the large number in the top right corner. It's like this bio strength here costs 40 credits or creds as they're called in this game the unarmed combat generates 10 damage towards the obstacles that you're trying to fight off while inside the game um so like i mentioned earlier the game is kind of split into two phases one is training training takes place over the course of five rounds um and you will only be able to purchase stuff in the barracks the barracks is the first row of items down at the bottom um, you have a first aid kit a mag pistol a hacking device heightened senses and then one of the three um, character types like we talked about earlier um, at the end of the training that's when you actually enter the game and all of these options down here in the barracks will go away um, so you want to basically decide uh, early on if you're going to take one of these uh, three character types. Uh, they do cost um, creds, so the cyborg and the biogene costs 40, while the soldier only costs 20. Um, however, if you choose not to, you can still enter the game as just a generic um, person, and uh, you will have 60 health and none of these abilities. So that is an option to you if you just want to buy stuff. Um, every time I've played, I've taken, uh, you know, one of these just to experiment with them. Uh, the cyborg, we'll take a look at these really quickly. Uh, so this is your health here on the left-hand side. Um, like I said, if you're just a raw um, character with, n with none of these, then you start with 60 health. Cyborg here starts with 90. Uh, his ability says that cybernetic cards cost 20 less to purchase and cybernetic is a keyword like you can see here on this arm uh, So instead of being 40 credits to purchase uh, with the cyborg, this would only cost you um, 20 and then over here in the bottom right um, it has a cumulative effect the cumulative effect for this card says you get a bonus for each cybernetic card you play this turn. So if you play one cybernetic card, you get a bonus 10 damage towards your obstacle. If you play two, you get another 10 damage. If you play three, you get another 10 damage, plus you get to draw a card. So you can see while playing a cyborg, you might wanna be getting the uh, cybernetic stuff uh, as opposed to this stuff over here, the biotech and the soldier's weapons. So that's kind of how these things work. Um, you're going to draw five cards, um, and then you play them, uh, then you buy stuff. The stuff that you buy goes into your discard pile, and then once your draw pile runs out, you shuffle your discard pile into uh, your hand, just like basically every other uh, deck builder that you've probably played in the past. So that's how um, the opening phase, the training phase happens. Like I said, once you uh, complete the training phase, all of these cards will go away and you will officially enter the game. Okay, so once you have entered the game, uh, you should have a bunch of new cards in your deck and you're ready to start buying these more advanced cards. 
So this first row that you see here, this is the level one of the armory. The only time that you can purchase anything that's in this front row here is while you're on level one of the game. Once you leave level one of the game and when you're between levels two and five, you can no longer purchase anything in this level one. They don't go away because you can go back a level. So if you're in level two and you decide that you want one of these cards, you can go back into level one to buy one. Once you've uh, left level one, if you don't ever come back, you'll only be purchasing cards from level two. Um, what makes level two unique is that you have um, one level one cards for each of the three main categories. And then you have level two through five cards that are shuffled randomly and placed in these decks. So once you enter the game, you can flip the top card over and these become purchasable. So now you have an extra um, item that you can go for here. So um, I'm not going to go over the cards too much. Um, a lot of them are very self-explanatory. You just read what it says and that's what it does. Um, almost all of these cards are not going to give you creds. So um, you're going to want to buy things that give you creds early in the game um, so that you can get up to some of these higher values like 60 and 70 and stuff like that. Um, so let's just look at Rocket Launcher here, for example. This is a level 3 item. Um, it is a cybernetic weapon. So again, if you are playing, um, you know, a character that benefits from cybernetic stuff, this applies there. Um, it costs 60 gold to purchase, or 60 creds to purchase. It is a ranged weapon. Range and grenade, these keywords here, they will play off of other cards. So you may have something that says you know, all ranged weapons get plus 10 damage or something like that. Um, splash, that's another keyword. It's going to do damage to everything that's in the same room. So you can actually deal damage to other players that are in the same uh, level as you. Um, but other than looking at the keywords here, you have this number right there, which indicates how much damage you're going to generate towards the obstacles. And that's how purchasing works. Um, it's pretty straightforward uh, once you uh, figure out uh, how the different um, decks and stuff are set up. This armory of cards is always going to be out on the table. Again, once that barracks, uh, that basic level goes away. Um, and then you, you just cycle through this stuff. So if you purchase a card off of this, uh, at the end of your turn, you would flip stuff over. The other thing that's unique about these is when you enter the first player to enter level uh, three and to enter level four, um, you will take the top card that's there, you'll move it off, and then you'll flip another card um, so that you're showing yet another card. So you've got multiple cards out uh, that you are available for purchase. All right, now let's take a look really quickly at how um, the actual turns work and how you enter the game and uh, move through it uh, fighting enemies and uh, earning victory points. So um, once you're inside the game, the game itself is played in two phases, the encounter phase and the upgrade phase. I kind of explained to you already how the upgrade phase works, but we'll go over it again in a second. The encounter phase, um, everybody is going to place their meeples or their standees uh, somewhere near what level that they're on to indicate everybody's going to enter at level one. Um, then you're going to generate movement points. So um, soldiers and not soldiers, but um, the uh, cyborgs and generic players are only going to have one movement point, whereas the other ones are going to have two movement points. Um, and in order to uh, move from floor to floor, you just spend that movement point. So um, the very first thing is to move or to stay. Staying uh, actually takes a movement point away. So if you wanted to stay in level one, rather than moving on to level two, um, you're going to lose your, your one movement point if I was playing. Let's just assume I'm playing a cyborg here. Um, so that's the very first thing you do. Are you going to move? Or are you going to stay? Uh, then you reveal the obstacle if there isn't one already revealed 
at that location. So we would reveal this obstacle here. It is a, um, a 20 health obstacle that deals uh, 10 damage to you. And uh, during combat, you would uh, discard a, uh, a cred if you um, don't take this enemy out, basically. So the way that fighting obstacles work is you decide if you want to move or stay. We decided to stay. Uh, we revealed the obstacle, and then we resolve any assaults. There are no assaults on this card. It would be a keyword. It's basically something that happens as soon as it's revealed. Uh, then we play our cards in our hand, right? So if I have my, my hand over here, let me shuffle this up real quick. And I have my five cards because everybody has five cards in their hands. Oh, look, all I got was creds. So I have 50 creds, but I have nothing that can deal the 20 damage I need to deal in order to take out this, um, this holographic thud, thug. So, um... I played cards, I can't attack because I've generated no attack, um, and then combat happens. This is um, either I'm killing it, or it stays there and it's going to deal damage to me. So it's go going to deal 10 damage to me, and uh, during this combat I'm going to have to discard one of my creds. So I've got 4 creds left, 40 credits total. And uh, this guy is going to stay until somebody can take him out. So then I would um, I would be able to spend more movement if I had any. Um, and I had defeated him. I didn't defeat him. And I don't have any more movement anyway. So I'm going to stay right there. I do have these 40 creds though. And then we would go into phase 2 which is the upgrade. I would um, use these to purchase up to two items from the board that I just showed you a second ago. And then um, we would uh, reload by discarding all of my cards and everything that's in play, and then drawing five new cards. So I spent all my creds, I bought stuff, and then I'm gonna draw five new cards. And then the turn moves to the next player. Um, if you're playing solo, same thing. Now we just go through it again. Do I wanna move or do I wanna stay? Well, I can't move because there's an obstacle still facing me. So I have to fight him, which is what? It's staying. So I have to fight him. This time I have 30 unarmed combat points. So I can easily take out his 20 health. And then I still have 20 creds left to purchase something. Then we would go into the reset. I don't have any cards left to draw. We would shuffle these up. I draw back up to five, one, two, three, four, five, and play moves on to the next person. So let's look at somebody that's a little more difficult really quickly, because that guy, the, the first floor guys are pretty easy to take out, but they get significantly harder throughout the game. So here we have a 30 health guy who's dealing 40 damage to us. Remember, some characters only have 60 health, so that's pretty crazy. He's also worth 20 creds, so when you actually beat this guy, you get to add him into your uh, discard pile. And at the end of the game, he's worth one victory point. So you would reveal this guy. We're going to play our cards. What do we got here? We actually have, again, we got lucky, and we got the three unarmed combats. So we can easily take this guy out. He has no... Um, he has uh, no assault uh, text on him, so we're not going to deal any um, extra weird stuff to us uh, or to ourselves. We're going to deal 30 damage to him with these cards here, which easily takes him out, again, because he only has 30 health. He's going to give us one victory point at the end of the game, and he goes in our discard pile. Then we still have 20 creds left to spend towards whatever it is we're going to do. And that's what we've accomplished here in level 2. Then, again, on the next turn, if I wanted to, I could move to level 3. I could stay at level 2, or I could go back to level 1. So that's that push-your-luck stuff that we were talking about. Um, you know, you don't want to stay inside the game too long because you don't want to die because then you lose completely. Uh, but you want to stay inside the game long enough to uh, rack up victory points. Um, 
And honestly, that's how the game is played. Everything else uh, that you would need to know comes from reading the cards. Uh, all of the text is very, very self-explanatory. And, um, and yeah, like I said, even if you're playing a solo player uh, game, even if you're playing all uh, by yourself, uh, the rules don't change at all. The only thing that changes uh, when you're using uh, multiple... Uh, different types is you can see here on this chart uh, that one player you have a different amount of cards inside of each area of the game and with four players you add basically for every player extra that you're playing with you keep adding cards to it and that's the only thing that changes other than that the mechanics are exactly the same which I really really like and that's really all there is to surviving the game. Uh, now, one thing that I didn't mention at the beginning of the video is GAME. Uh, the word GAME is actually um, an acronym. It stands for Geotech's Advanced Military Engagement Facility. Uh, so when Geo uh, Geotech built this uh, facility, that's what they, they named it. And you enter it to try and uh, rack up as many victory points as you can and come out and be the winner. Um, there's different ways of triggering endgame. Um, if you are the sole survivor, um, that triggers endgame. Uh, once someone exits the game, that triggers endgame um, and things like that. So uh, what do I think of this game? It's actually a lot of fun. Um, at first, I was a little confused about the rules. Um, I talked directly with the developers. They cleared up a lot of stuff, um, which was very, very appreciated. Um, I really like the fact that they uh, give you dividers for each of the card types. So when you're storing the game, you have those dividers already in there. That's a big thing for me because um, it makes setup and tear down much, much easier uh, when you can have all of the cards well organized straight out of the package that they included. That was huge for me. Um, I like the art. Um, it's simple, um, but it, it, it fits the theme of the game. Um, I can't really comment too much on any of the other components because this is a very new prototype, so I don't know um, like what the standees are going to look like or anything like that. But you guys can definitely uh, find out more about this game. All you have to do is follow their Kickstarter. Like I said at the beginning of the video, they don't want to uh, launch the Kickstarter until they have 500 followers. So uh, I know that they would really appreciate that if you went ahead clicked on that link down in the description below, went to their Kickstarter page, and gave them a follow. If you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It really means a lot to us. Make sure that you share it with your family, friends, and your nerdy communities. If you have any games that you want to see us cover here on the channel, please let us know down in the comment section below. I do read all of those, and I enjoy interacting with you guys. If you have any content that you would like featured on our page, if you want to collaborate with us, you can hit us up on one of our social media platforms at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Circle of Nerds. Also, don't forget that we have a podcast that comes out on Tuesdays called The Cosmic Disaster Show. You can find that right here on YouTube or anywhere that you enjoy listening to podcasts. And for an extra bit of love and affection to us here at The Circle of Nerds, please consider checking us out over on Patreon at patreon.com slash circle of nerds. Anyway, guys, that's all from me. I will see you in the next video.